Welcome to Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kindlewater. Issues and Answers is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. And now, Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kindlewater. Welcome to the program. I'm Diane Kinderwater. If I had them, I'd wear them. Pearls I'm talking about. Instead, I'm wearing this beautiful dark black rope, which is a necklace. But if I had pearls, I would wear them on the show today because we're going to talk about pearls. Not the beautiful ones from the ocean, but a program, a new program called Pearls. Pro program to encourage active, rewarding lives. This program is offered through Bernalillo County Extension and New Mexico State University. And you're saying, wow, they're gonna talk about jewelry making <laughs> at the Extension? Not in this program. This program is going to help many of us in the elderly population to feel better, to have a better life, feel a little bit happier. And if you can believe this statistic, and you should because it's through extension and they do everything through research-based, talk about loneliness. Loneliness is, a, is damaging to health as much as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Well, we have all know the dangers of smoking even 15 cigarettes a day, but loneliness is supposed to be as damaging to our health as that. If you believe that, continue watching our program. Please stay with us as we discuss pearls and how it operates and how it can help us in our lives. Stay with us, we'll be back right after this. We are just Army National Guard soldiers. We are normal people just like you. And together, we can make a difference. Take on your legacy. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. Oh, why am I smiling when we're talking about depression? I'm laughing because when you get nervous, you kind of laugh. I don't know I do. When I'm nervous about something, I laugh because I'm uncomfortable. And I am uncomfortable about depression because I know it runs in many families, and I know it's a real, real thing. And Diane Christensen Associate Professor with New Mexico State University is smiling and nodding. Yes. <laughs> right, Diane? I mean, laughing is good, but we're uncomfortable talking about depression. Yes, that's really true. Um, there's this perception that you should be able to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and I know a lot of um, families and um, cultures, it's not acceptable to talk about it. It's seen as a weakness. And so a lot of people suffer in silence. And um, I think especially post-pandemic, a lot of people are wrestling with loneliness and um, feelings of isolation. So um, I'm excited that this program has been brought to New Mexico at this particular time. And it's called Pearls. Mm -hmm. And you recently completed training as a facilitator for this new wellness program. Yes. Um, and it's being introduced to New Mexico. I believe it was developed in Washington, I think uh -huh. Washington State. Mm -hmm. um, but you're excited about it. I am excited about it. I think uh, maybe it was born a little bit about, out of my own experience. I think um, post-pandemic, um, just beginning to realize um, maybe some depressive symptoms in my own life. I mean, I was finding myself waking up thinking, oh, another day, which doesn't really like me. Um, not seeing the friends that I used to see on a very regular basis uh, before the pandemic. I, got, I think I got so used to being by myself that I wasn't getting out and socializing. Um, some of those kinds of things. I wasn't doing the things that I used to enjoy doing anymore. And um, I began to realize that um, kind of coming back from the pandemic, it's really important um, to integrate some of these things back into our lives. What if, that, if the research shows this, because a lot of us experience the same, same thing, mm -hmm. I do too, exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Did the pandemic kick something out of us or just slow us down? You know, I think in, a, in some respects, I know I can only speak for myself, it was a blessing in some respects to slow down, um, you know, and to have an alternate way of working. Some of those things were huge benefits. You know, we learned that that can be done very effectively. But one of the things that I realized, for example, was socializing. We always have goals for our health and our careers and professional goals, all those things. But I was challenged to have a relational goal. 
So last year I made a goal to begin to um, have people over to our house. Um, not a ton, but maybe three times, three, four times this year. Reconnect with old friends that I hadn't seen maybe in a year, year or two. Um, maybe connect more regularly with girlfriends that are life-giving to me instead of just being by myself all the time. And because by, it's, an, it's an, yeah. well, it's more of an effort now than it used to be. Yes, yes. And so by doing that, I'm really happy to report because I made a goal and I figured out when I was going to do it, I've reached it. And I am happier. And those relationships have, are, were always there, but they've been re-cemented. And it's been a really big blessing this year just to make that a priority. So you weren't alone because University of Wisconsin, or excuse me, Washington studied mm -hmm. this program to encourage active, rewarding lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's encouraging this because you gave me the statistics that I read one at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. which I'm not doubting, but kind of. <laughs> Loneliness is as dangerous or is as damaging to our health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you what do, explain that if you can? I can't. Okay, yeah, that's okay. So these are just the statistics they gave, you know, the, yeah. the research from them gave us. But um, but 43% of older adults feel um, lonely on a regular basis. I think that's pretty accurate. You know, I'm an older adult and I can vouch for that. I feel lonely sometimes. And so uh, and then uh, there's a 45 uh, percent increased risk, risk of death in adults who reported feeling lonely. Um, so, and then one in five older adults are affected by social isolation. And so that can be often chosen. You know, we choose to isolate ourselves, but it does lead to loneliness, which can lead to depressive symptoms. And of course, here in New Mexico, and as in many states, we have all these senior centers throughout the mm -hmm. whole state. So there's, mm -hmm. I mean, they have the free yes. meals or reduced meals, breakfast yes. and lunch, mm -hmm. and there's no reason to feel isolated or lonely because mm -hmm. there are places to go. It's just getting out and doing it, and maybe yeah. making a goal to do it. Well, and I think that's the idea behind Pearls is to give people self-management tools because let's face it, you know, I've gone through times when I've experienced depressive symptoms and even making a phone call was hard, which normally is not hard for me. Um, and so it's like you feel like you're walking through mud. That's the only way I can describe it. You know, it's like trying to walk through mud. You don't feel yourself. And so while it's easy to think, just go down to that senior center, getting yourself down there is a whole other thing when you have depressive symptoms in your life. This program um, encourages, again, being active but it's a self-management program, mm -hmm. but it also is a kind of a one-on-one -on -one with a, like a life coach type of thing. Tell me, I mean, that's yeah. pretty nice and it's free of right. charge. Yes, yeah. It's so tell really, me how the program works. Well, it's, it's new for extension. We typically don't do one-on-ones. Typically we do groups of people, but this one is one-on-one. -on -one. And um, the way it's structured is that initially, uh, we do just a, um, an evaluation to see if this program is a good fit for your needs. For, ah. for people that are seeing a therapist or um, maybe on medication, antidepression medi medication, that type of thing, this probably wouldn't be a good fit because they're getting their needs, need, needs met you know, in another way. Um, but this program would be for um, maybe a person that says, you know, I, I can relate to some of the things she's saying. You know, I have some of those symptoms. For example, a little interest or pleasure in doing things. You just don't feel like doing anything. You know, um, feeling sad, down, or hopeless. That can be, you know, that can happen to many of us. If you have sleep disturbances, you're not sleeping well through the night, um, and you're just generally tired with little energy. You know, just kind of at that lethargy that you just aren't motivated to do anything. Feeling bad about yourself, just being super self-critical. Um, you're having problems concentrating. That can be a sign of depressive symptoms. Moving or speaking slowly. That one was new to me. If you're moving and speaking abnormally slowly, hmm. 
That's a sign um, of depression. Yeah. Or depressive. Isn't that interesting? I did not know that. I thought it was a sign of like a stroke. Because yeah. I think that I had that. <laughs> right. And I'll say, oh, we had a stroke. I'm sure a mini stroke. I mean, right? We probably all had mini strokes. Yeah. Okay. And then thoughts of self-harm. You know, of course, that's, a, that's when people typically think. But all those things are depressive symptoms. And um, if a person's experiencing them, having someone come alongside, what PEARLS does is it teaches you how to manage those issues yourself. And so we teach self-management tools, and the self-management tools are um, teaching problem-solving skills. So you kind of think, oh, that's pretty basic, but you know, sometimes you have a problem and you just ruminate about it and worry, worry, worry until it becomes gigantic. But I love this problem-solving um, tool that we give because it helps a person brainstorm, okay, I've got this problem, I'm going to brainstorm five things of how I could solve that problem. And then you systematically try each one and see if it works. If it doesn't, then you go back and try another one. Well, is problem-solving one of these? Yes, it's one of the tools that we teach. Oh, one of the tools. So yeah. they feel hopeless sometimes. I'm here I'm saying, yeah, it kind of is hopeless. I mean, society has changed. Everything is just mm -hmm. so hard, yeah. so difficult. There aren't people to serve, to help at the store. I mean, maybe I'm depressed, but everything just to me seems like such a big effort. Yes. And people aren't at the level my expectations are. They will know how to do their job and they don't. And it's just, mm -hmm. I feel sometimes hopeless and kind of yeah. like giving up. I used to try to correct and usher things along, but now it's like, I'm one person, I can't have control anymore. I've given mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a question of mindset, you know, and so. So what tool so would you tell again, someone like that who feels that way? Using the problem solving one, it's like, okay, maybe instead of focusing on they're not meeting my needs, how could I meet their needs? You know, may, who knows? Maybe that, that checker at the grocery store's husband is dying. You know, you just never know what that other person is going through. So for me, that might be a part of my problem solving. I get so frustrated by this, but I'm going to be more other-centered than focused on myself. That is that part be. of the tools that you well, would it's, offer? It's, 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 it, whatever a person uh -huh. wants to help. A tool. We help them just brainstorm. You're feeling this way. Frustrated. Yeah, let's find five ways that maybe you could overcome that. Well, I would say one way is to give up. Yeah. No, no, give well, up, be hopeless. Well, <laughs> don't, don't yes, but then that, that <laughs> probably isn't. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you, yeah, but you want to you be happy. I'm always amazed. I've, I've done a lot of coaching over the years, and I just get so, um, it delights me, because people find the answers to their own problems. As a coach, you're just helping them find the answers to their own questions, and it, people are so creative. It, you know, I could have thought all day about a solution for maybe Joe Bob's problem, but Joe Bob knows the solution. He just needs a coach to kind of bring it out. And um, people amaze me. They come up with the most creative solutions because it's their life and, and it's what they're doing. And, and it's really rewarding to see people find their own way through on so many things. And so Is problem this, solving really helps with that. Is this program just for elderly people? It's primarily for 50, people 50 and older. Oh, that's, that's, not that's old. a target. That's not, come on. Your children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we also encourage people to be active. I know sometimes I think, you know, I could be sitting at home working or whatever in the office, and I think I should get up and take a walk. Ugh, I don't want to take a walk. But when I do, I feel so much better because research tells us that we, our brains need a rest about every 60 to 90 minutes to be at our maximum efficiency. So if you just keep plowing through, never giving your brain a rest, that you're not at your maximum efficiency or effectiveness. And so physical activity is really important um, to this. To give yourself um, a break like that, okay. Yeah, yeah, typically when I finish a task, I get up and I just take a walk around the campus where I work. But the deal is I can't think about work. I've gotta look at the mountains, I need to smell the air, I need to, just be really present in that walk and I'm amazed at how much more 10 minutes later I'm just much more energized for the next thing. 
What other tips can you give? Um, I mean, other than t coming in, contacting Berlioz County Extension, right, and being yeah. a participant, it's six mm -hmm. weeks. How, how does it work? Um, we meet one on one for eight weeks, eight and weeks. then um, and we'll go through these self management tools and see how they're working in their, your life and you know so that people get really familiar with using them and then hopefully they can kind of fly on their own but we'll check in with them um, for three to four months just to see how they're doing and um, so I think it's going to be exciting it's um, this is it's um, all about um, self-management we are not diagnosing depression um, none of that this is just if a person is feeling like they might have some depressive symptoms we have some self-management tools that can help them. And it's not really like a counseling session, right? No, it is absolutely, we really don't <laughs> want to give that impression. We are not counselors by any means. We are simply coaches teaching self-management tools. That's all. So, um, How do they get in contact with Bernalillo County Oh, they can get in touch with um, bernalilloextension.nmsu.edu. Um, they can call 505-243. 1386, and if they'd like to be um, screened to be part of the Pearls program, I'd be happy to do that. And it's, how can it be free? Other than our taxes pay for Burlington <laughs> County Extension, I always make that point that we as taxpayers do pay yes. for the program. But there are a lot of really good agencies. How this happens to come to New Mexico is the New Mexico Diabetes Advisory Council, which is a group of volunteers applied for a grant and they got a $600,000 grant and they br they're bringing all that money to New Mexico um, in forms of different programs around diabetes and then this PEARLS program. And so that's how we were able to bring it to this, train people and bring it to the state for free is because of that grant. Let's get some, you've, you trained as a facilitator, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's uh, give some of the tools that people can try at home. Yeah, give an example. So, well, Oh, all of these things. <laughs> Not feel bad about yourself. Tired with little energy. Okay. Feeling down. We talked about that. M moving or speaking slowly at the stroke. But so let's say um, I'm feeling like I'm moving or speaking slowly. Mm -hmm. Well, mainly I'm moving slowly because I don't want to fall at this stage of life, right? Right. So that I would shuffle. Be... I'm a shuffler. <laughs> and my so... people say you're shuffling. Well, yeah, I'm not going to fall. Okay. Right. So if I and come in the session and say I'm moving or speaking slowly. Right. So mm -hmm. we would talk about falls. Risk of falls is a very big um, problem in the elderly population because it's, it's very real. And so um, a lot of people, one of the other tools that we encourage is activity because you do feel so much better. But if people are afraid of falling, they're not going to be active. So, well, no, but, but I'm saying I'm coming to you saying uh -huh. I have one of these depressive symptoms. I'm moving, driving, and speaking slowly. Right. So I think the idea is um, the tools help you. Um, those are just signs that you might be having depressive ah, symptoms. Oh, you don't address that exact No, symptom. not ah, that exact one. Thank so, you. But, but That's if, just a sign that... Uh, but if worry over fear of falling is one oh, of them, okay. then we would use the problem solving because there's, um, if people are interested in taking a balance program, Paths to Health New Mexico, where they can just put that in its path, P-A-T-H, to Health New Mexico, is a wonderful website and it's got a lot of great free programs and um, balance classes are part of it. So they can find out where those are in the city. Oh, I see. But your tool is to help you become active, not to solve this exact same thing. If I right. say I have a concentration pro problem, mm -hmm. you're not giving me a tool to work on the concentration, no. but to work on the depression that might lead to that concentration. Right. So the four um, tools are problem solving, um, being be, being physically active, um, becoming socially active. Maybe, for example, I used to go to church every week, but now I don't go. Well, we, helping you to begin to, to get back to that. And then the last one is doing things that you find pleasure in. That was another thing for myself I realized. Um, what brings me joy? What is life giving to me? What fills me up? After the pandemic, I couldn't really tell you. You know, I used to love to sew, but I don't really do that anymore, you know. And so it's really important for people to identify what brings you joy, what fills you up. Um, you know, being with friends is life-giving to me. Um, that, that's one that I identified. So 
I took steps to begin to, to enjoy being with friends again. Um, and then just being socially active, that's really important in aging. Um, one of the really most important things in aging is to, to begin to be um, socially active. Um, I've been trained by the Alzheimer's Association and that's a really important one. What are some so. examples of being socially active? Again, going to church? Yes. Something they may have done before mm -hmm. the pandemic and didn't. They stopped that routine. Right. Just in, just being with other people, serving maybe, being <sighs> be, serving other people is another thing. When you, you're just totally absorbed in yourself, there's nothing like serving another person that's life-giving. Um, also, being with people and having deeper discussions, I think, too. Not just like, oh, how's the weather? But, but really being able to talk about thoughts and ideas and those kinds of things. Um, that's really good for your brain. So um, maybe having more than just surface conversation. But you know, there are, you're right, there's so many fantastic senior centers in our area. We are really fortunate. I'm in a lot of them and they are beautiful facilities. If people haven't checked it out, they're amazing. A lot of activities. And or go to New Mexico Extension, Bernalillo yes. County yes. Extension. Yes, we have My a lot gosh. going on. You yes. have a lot. Where are you located and what do you have going on? We're at 1510 Manal, um, extension northwest. Um, What's the cross street in Manal? Is it, uh, it's Manal and 12th. Yeah, oh. we're right very centrally located just after the big eye. And again, the website. Kind of by Lowe's? Yes, right by Lowe's. Yeah, that's exactly right. And um, you can get all of, we have a lot of great classes coming up all the time. We have new classes every quarter. And you can get those at bernalioextension.nmsu.edu. So if you're lonely, just head out. Are you open 8 to 5? Um, 8 to 4.30, but we're closed from 12 to 12.30 uh, for lunch. And they can just come in and sign up for the classes? or Yeah, they're f but they're really free to call. It's 505-243-1386. I was trying to encourage people to get up and out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then if you go to the website, there's ways that you register for the classes online. So you don't really need to come in. Yeah. Eight weeks. You meet there at Extension, or where would you meet, Diane? We are free to meet wherever a person would like to. So we could meet at Extension. We could meet at their home. We could meet at a coffee shop. We could meet at the park. Really? We could go for a walk, <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. So it's, it's really up to what, what works for them. Crazy. What are some of the other tools that you could share that you learned as a facilitator that we can do? And, I mean, problem solving is one. Mm -hmm. What other tools? Yeah. Um, Let's see, I'm just, um, I think just again being physically active. We have one program that I love, it's called Walk With Ease. And it's from- No, is this part of Pearls or no? No, okay. it's just if you want to be more physically active, that, you know, there's four tools with this. So if you want to be more physically active, Walk With Ease is from the National Arthritis Foundation. And what I love about it is if you can stand for 10 minutes, you can be part of it. And so I have seen so many people that were very sedentary because they had pain from arthritis or diabetes or you know chronic disease and they have just their lives have changed from walk with ease because they're just getting out and moving more so we that's a really good program if you're wanting to get physically active um, again if you want to become socially active just set some small goals around that for example I used to go to church I don't do that anymore um, okay I think that I am going to go to church and just set a time to go once. You don't have to commit that you're going to go the rest of your life. It's just that it's one time. And usually what we find is it's so life-giving that we'll go back again. So. And I like doing things that bring them pleasure and joy. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah. like, why are you doing it if you don't like to do it? That's how I feel about myself. I do a lot of work. Why are you doing it if it doesn't? bring you pleasure or joy. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it's hard to think of those things, but one thing that you can think about is what did you enjoy as a child? Oh, I used to love to ride my bike, or I used to h love to hike, or um, I loved to swim when I was a kid, or I loved to read. I remember reading for hours as a kid, playing the piano. So if you're having a hard time figuring out what, what brings you joy, think about the things that you loved to do as a kid. It's, it's very interesting. It's a good way to think about it, and some things will come to your mind. When you started 
been trained into this, into Pearl's uh, program to encourage active, rewarding lives. A lot of things that you discussed, we've kind of heard before. What kind of stood out in your mind as some, I mean, I like that idea of thinking back as a child, I had never heard of that. Mm -hmm. But what about this program was new to you, Diane Christensen, when you became a facilitator? Well, it's, it's interesting because um, I have a degree in um, consumer sciences, family and consumer sciences, and that field is moving more into mental health work. And so um, this is an example of, an, of one of them. We have um, do a program called QPR, which is helping just the general population um, become more aware about suicide and helping people around us that may be feeling hopeless. Um, we're doing that work. We also have another one called Mind Matters that I'll be offering this um, in the spring. And that helps people that have had adverse childhood experiences in their lives. Perhaps they were raised in an alcoholic home or suffered child abuse, those kinds of things. Um, that program gives them, again, self-management tools to overcome those um, adverse effects. And so um, it's exciting as we're kind of moving and offering the public some new um, mental health programs. Which me mental health is something that our community, our society is finally looking at, addressing. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's there, it's been yes. hidden, it's been secret, mm -hmm. but it seems like almost everybody I know have a, has a mental health issue. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the adverse childhood experiences is a really important one. It's called ACEs. And um, people with a high ACEs score, there's a 10 point questionnaire that talks about if you know these you would moving, okay. de de these certain things, but is it no? It's interesting that wellness is now being addressed by Berkeley County yeah. Extension and yeah. New Mexico State University, mm -hmm. moving into the area that affects all of our lives, all of our not lives. just physical, but the mental health yes, as well. Yes, so important. Yes. So congratulations for taking that on as well. Yep, uh, my pleasure. I, and my if you want to see sir. Diane Christensen in mm -hmm. person, she's the facilitator for the program. So. Mm -hmm you'll be the one talking and visiting with these folks, yes. giving them the yes. tools. An yes. eight-week session, that's a lot. Yeah, but not too long. That's it's pretty fast. Okay. <laughs> and there's so much offered through New Mexico. Yeah. Burley County mm -hmm. Extension, thank you so much for that. Thanks for sharing on our program, Diane Christensen. You're welcome. I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. We'll see you. Appreciate you guys watching and make it a great week with your family. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Fire threatens everything in its path. When it threatens our communities, we respond. We bring the fight to the front line. The Army National Guard stands ready because sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. We will always be there when our community needs us the most. Find out more about serving your community part-time by visiting nationalguard.com. Issues and Answers with your host Diane Kinnewater is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. To comment on today's program or to purchase a copy of any Issues and Answers program, visit sunbroadcasting.org or call us at 505-345-1991.